Oh, hey! <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Thursday Live Lessons. This is Aldrin Guerrero. Uh, me. <laughs> Aaron, the voice, not Kamara. We have Kahai, the legend, Ferguson. What's up, Kahai? What's up? The trio is here. We are, um, yeah, it's Thursday Live Lessons where you, you get your questions answered by us. We uh, deliberate. We give you the best answer that we can. And yeah, then we move on to the next person that has a question. And we answer that. And we move on to the next person. We answer that. We answer any and all of your questions. However we get them. We get them via email. We get them via messages. We get them via you who's on the street and stuff. Whatever. However we uh, <laughs> have a question from the street like Billy Agnew style. So... <laughs> We are here. Let's get started. We know how this works. And thank you for those people who are watching this uh, part of UU+. Plus. Thank you so much for um, for taking that step to, uh, to to learning the ukulele like in the best way possible. Thank you so much. For those of you folks listening to us on, on your podcast, drive carefully. All right? <laughs> so let's, uh, let's get started. Kai, give us a question. Uh, this is from Will. And, okay. and this was asked like on a couple uh, uh, live lessons ago. Mm. Uh, in the chat so he asks what are the pros and cons of active versus p passive pickups what do you recommend and what brand do you have in your ukulele okay um we've talked about this before but you know um great question by the way uh active and passive pickups two very very different actually um passive pickups require no uh no additional power to power it up and uh active usually draws power from some kind of battery or you know it's, well usually batteries that it draws from it depends on what kind of battery some takes like watch batteries some take nine volts so on and so forth it just depends on which you know which kind of pickup so knowing that um it's it's basically the active pickup is going to be a lot more powerful a lot louder um but the passive pickup is not going to be as much but it's going to give you a more natural sound because it's not uh it's not powered but both of them are under saddle pickups you would put it underneath underneath the saddle and um on the piezo piezo how do you say, i say piezo how do you pronounce that correctly <laughs> the piezo is a piezo it's gonna be another uh, what, <laughs> yeah. uh Dia, Dia Dario. we are always calling it Dia Dario. Dario. Di Di Dario. Dario. Di Dario. Di the piezo uh, goes right underneath here, and it picks up the uh, the frequencies and the signals that's you know uh, made by your ukulele. So if you strum your ukulele, that signal goes here to where the you know where the saddle is, and underneath that is where the pickups usually go. Um, there are pickups that you know doesn't have to be under the underneath the saddle. They have some kind of stick-ons that go on top of your ukulele or or underneath, um, so on and so forth. But those are usually passive pickups, but um, they're not gonna have. Yeah, they're not gonna have the volume the active pickups uh, active pickups do because the active pickup not only draws from the uh, from the vibration and the signals coming from your strings, but it's also being amplified slightly by the battery. All right, I tend to go for active pickups only because the active pickups will give me that more um, you know more power, and I'm not necessarily scared of you know of more power. I think it's it's really good. I'm very 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 aggressive when it comes to playing the ukulele, um, but I'm also very you know very gentle in some of the songs like Europa and um you know in some slow songs like um Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton I'll play those kind of slow tunes and I need good tone um regardless if I'm playing like nice and soft and stuff like that I still want a good tone with it passive um sometimes it doesn't cut through enough for me you know personally so um I tend to stick with the pass uh with the active pickup now on this particular ukulele this is um the Kanilea, they call it Peg Pals uh, pickup. So I've been using that pickup for years. Uh, on my new, I got I got another ukulele that I started using about a month ago, and I went back to my old pickup. Um, that is the uh, Fishman Natural One. It's no longer being produced. I managed to get a hold of like four or five of them from the local music shop from where our Magic Mike works. And um, their repairman is like, oh, I've got these. You want these? I was like, yes, I'll buy all of them. <laughs> so I grabbed them. And um, because I I used to use those and they were great. They sounded awesome. In the does, night. does Jake still use them? Because yes. like, didn't he say yeah, that he, he bought, bought the rest from like, fish stock? Right? Yeah, like, so he had like, back ugh. stock. Um, I like the kind of pickup you know, that they have, but it's like four individual crystals that go on there. And sometimes all four crystals are not quite balanced. So I was having some problem with balance issues. I like the tone. I like, you know, the volume, everything that goes along with it. But the balance is really giving me an issue. So meaning like 
Oh, um, yeah, meaning some of the strings are louder than others, some, some are, you know, kind of soft and stuff. It's that particular pickup, you, it can be balanced. Like, this one is nice and balanced, this uke. But there are some ukes that I have that are not that balanced, and um, it's a little finicky, you know, that, that, uh, that pickup. So, for consistency's sake, I, um, I like the natural one because that has given me a nice consistent tone. Um, it can also have balancing issues, but it's not as difficult and not as prominent as the um, the Peg Pals pickup that Kalilia has. Because balancing can come from like the person who installs it too. Or not not necessarily the person, but like yeah. just how they install right. it. Right. How they install it and the build and stuff. Um what causes those issues is because there's four crystals that are like, you know, that are underneath the saddle. So the tension of our strings are all different, right? Because the tension of the strings are different, meaning the, uh, the amount of pressure that they're pushing down on the saddle are going to be different. And the more um, the string pushes down, you know, the more pressure uh, on, that, on that push there is. That means the more contact it'll have with the pickup underneath it. The more contact means more signal. So some of these are not quite as, uh, you know, as tight as, as the other. Um, for example, my A string and my G string are pretty much the same diameter, um, whereas the G is just slightly, slightly thicker. And um, because they're, uh, they're pretty much the same diameter, that means they're going to have uh, similar um, tension. But since the G is tuned a whole step lower, it's actually looser than the A. So sometimes the G, you know, when, uh, when it's installed, the G might be a little bit softer than the A is because the A is making more contact with the, uh, with the pickup than the G string is. So what you do, is you add more contact to it by like adding um, uh, like like glue or any kind of you know any kind of material, and it's really 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 paper thin because um, by like the you know fractions of millimeters, it's it's already going to cause like all these you know not problems but differences in the volume and tone and tone of the um, of the pickup, and that's why because it's like like fractions of a millimeter, like that's the room for error. I didn't really want to deal with it anymore, you know, and um, then I switched back to the natural one. They sound good though. Like if it's installed correctly, if, you know, if uh, there's no problems with, you know, with, with the pickup, it's a great pickup. And I've been using it for years, maybe it's a good, I don't know, five years I was using that pickup. And um, for this particular new ukulele that I've had, uh, and I've been meaning to use that new ukulele for a long time. And that's why that one's back there retired now. It's because um, that one was set up nicely and correctly. But the new pickup that I, or the new color that I have was just like kind of wonky. It wasn't working, you know, properly. So switch to the natural one. It works all good now. Oh, oh. <laughs> Guess we'll go what to happened? the closed we cam. Lost the oh, signal. we lost signal from one of our cameras. One moment, please. All right. So you guys are gonna see Mavericks. This is from from SoCal. So yeah, someone, <laughs> someone, someone from sent, uh, um, a T shirt. To yeah, us. a while back. Yeah, this is a callback. Yeah. yeah, Mavericks is a surf spot in I believe San Diego. When we went on that San Diego um, tour to what was that? The Holly Ukulele. It's called Holly Ukulele, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Holly Ukulele. Um, was introduced to us by Craig and Sarah, I believe, or we knew them before Craig and Sarah introduced to uh, them to us. But they're cool, cool people. Holly Ukulele, check them out over in San Diego. But anyway, yeah, that's um, that's how I like pickups, or that's my <laughs> my, my my little thing on pickups. Yeah. So, uh, Aaron, what do you um, what pickups oh. do you use? Well, <laughs> um, I actually don't have any pickups in my ukuleles because mm -hmm. I don't play them on stage anyway. Mm -hmm. So I I mean that's kind of the thing too, right? If you're not gonna play your ukuleles on stage, if you're never gonna plug them in, then mm -hmm. You probably shouldn't install a pickup. That's true. You know, mm -hmm. you if you're not gonna use it, then mm -hmm. uh, don't mess with the sound of your your ukulele. Yeah, because it, it will like drilling a hole like trying to install the pickup is gonna change the um you know the sound of your uke. Not yeah. by much, and we've covered this before also. But for uh for my guitars, I use LR bags. Yeah. Um, and then uh somebody somebody in the chat asked mm. um. I can see the chat now. Yeah, I so never after, have the chat. In front of me. <laughs> so after Aldrin <laughs> brought the pickup, mm -hmm. bought the pickups, did he install them himself? Um, I have installed pickups myself before, but for Connie Leia, you know what? I have I have Uncle Joe to do it for me. So you know why why not <laughs> <Just> have <laughs> yeah. somebody professionally do it for you? Back um, when I had my Kamaka, um, back when I was playing the Lumanog, 
back, you know, uh, back then I used to like install my own pickups and just kind of work on it myself. Some of my Conalea pickups I worked on the balance by myself. Um, and that would, you know, that would fix the balance. Because uh, I talked it over with Joe. I was like, I don't really want to send it over. I kind of know how to, fix the, uh, how to fix the balance. So I'll just try it myself. Sometimes it worked. Sometimes it didn't. When it didn't, I would have to send it to, over to Oakland yeah, and get it fixed yeah. and stuff. It's all like kind of playing with the saddle, right? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. And it's um, tough because like you set it and then you have to leave it for like a day or two because yeah. um, you know, it, the, um, the uh, not pressure. Oh yeah, I guess the pressure and the um, the tension will change, you know? Like it's mm -hmm. kind of like when you when put your like, when your strings, in, yeah, exactly, then, when your strings yeah. settle in. Well, like uh, we, at the music shop that I worked at, we used like uh, paper shims mm -hmm. to kind of like adjust balance and stuff sometimes. And yeah, like the the if you put a paper underneath the the mm -hmm. bridge, mm -hmm. it'll squish down, right? And so mm -hmm. that just like yeah. over time mm -hmm. it changes. Yeah, the paper like, itself will whatever yeah. material that you yeah. use. Yeah. Yeah. So as a shim is gonna kind of compress a little, and it'll change. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that um that I learned as uh um like messing with the you know messing with the pickup and messing with the um the balance is if you want to turn down one say for example like the c usually is the c because the c has really high tension um the c might be too bright so in order to turn that down you take off the saddle and you like make a pencil mark just a pencil mark and then you um you know you sand it no not sand, yeah. sand but like yeah i guess sand, sand it down you sand it down with you know with the uh, with sandpaper or or you can file, you can just file it down. You can file that down um, until you can't see the pencil mark anymore. So it's like as thin as a pencil mark. You're not supposed to, because if you don't make a pencil mark and you just, you know, you're just filing you away. You don't know how deep yeah, you've you gone how how deep. in different places mm -hmm. on the saddle. So, so it's, it's like, it's a good rule of thumb to kind of, if you're interested in, in doing stuff. I've heard of like people adding, you know, adding more material by mm -hmm. like just using the graphite too from mm -hmm. a pencil, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah. or not like, it's not like they take out pencil lead or anything. They mm. just draw like yeah. lines <laughs> on top of the because it, it adds just that hair, you know. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's really 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 tough. But one rule is if your ukulele is balanced, when you change your strings, make sure to change them just one at a time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, if you take out all your strings, you're relieving all the tension on your saddle. Therefore, you might have to redo it again. And that's actually what happened because I used to use that ukulele. And then I changed the strings, took them all out, and then it was auto whacked again. Uh, and then I had to send it back. Yeah. yeah. So now so it's if like, you I change my lesson. <laughs> one at a time, yeah. then you'll keep the tension mm -hmm. at least on the other on the, strings. On the saddle. Yeah. Like the saddle will, you know, will, uh, will remain still. Because yeah. if you take this out, that saddle is going to, even even if it like moves just like uh, like a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a millimeter, it might, you know, um, give you some problems. So it's, 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 uh, risky <laughs> the the other part of will's question is like what do you recommend mm -hmm. and it, it's kind of hard right because everybody has different needs yeah and we like and we don't know what your even like what your ukulele is like mm -hmm. right and so certain ukuleles might respond better to certain pickups mm -hmm. and, rather than others yeah. so they're super personal i look at the uh, the pickup and DIs and th uh, and things like that as uh, as the microphones, uh, you know, for uh, for ukuleles because like your ukulele can sing, sure, you know, and then and people will hear it in, in the room and stuff. But if you want it amplified, you know, you're gonna have to use like like a microphone for your voice. It's kind of like a microphone for your ukulele, and you know, there's like Radio Shack microphones, and then there's like the Shure microphones, and there's Sennheiser. Like all they're doing really is making your your ukulele sound louder. Um, as far as the characteristics of each sound of uh, of like yeah. of, of a microphone, if it's, it's clear, yeah, it's or like more true to you know, it's uh, it's gonna be up to the consumer. It's gonna be up to you which one you know which one you like better. Obviously, some of the higher priced ones are going to you know give you a clearer tone and whatever. But if you can't hear the difference, then like mm -hmm. it, there's no sense in like I'm getting the more expensive one. Um, the only thing that I would um, I would say that really makes a difference is if it's an active or a passive pickup. Um, I like this because I'm familiar with the tone. Like I can hear the tone difference, and like I said, with the consistency in um, in the balance, I, I really like. But uh, some people, you know, will claim that like fish because it's a fishman natural one. It will have like a like a quack to it, and it does. But um, you know what? I just kind of added 
as part of my tone, <laughs> really. Like, it just becomes part of my playing. Well, you, you also use, um, what is it called? The LR bags. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then, like you said, like, with that kind of, you can kind of... Contour the Yeah, a little yeah. bit, right? Because mm -hmm. like, uh, you can... Um, there is a setting where um, where you can set the frequency of the of the high mids, so you can set the frequency that you want, so you can get rid of that quack, and that's kind of what I do. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, it or it's always hard whenever people are like, "Can you recommend something?" Because yeah. it's like, "Oh, can can you just try? Like, just don't <laughs> don't buy anything, but like yeah, try, try out a, a bunch, bunch of different ones, and, and like see you, what you like." Yeah, that yeah. that is definitely the best mm -hmm. way to do it. Like, uh, it's hard though, like with people mm -hmm. living in like remote areas, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Maybe they can't mm -hmm. exactly like try out stuff at music stores, but that definitely is the best way to yeah. do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. if you have the opportunity to, mm -hmm. then you mm -hmm. really should. Yeah. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, as far as brands and stuff, if you want, you know, names and suggestions for brands, Fishman, LR Bags, um, Peg Pals, and the Connie Leo one. Um, I've had experiences with, uh, uh, with my side, you know, some people like my side. Um, let's see, that's pretty much it. Like, those are, you know, like really standard like, yeah. names and pickups and stuff. LR Bags, Fishman, My Sai, Peg Pals. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. K and K for like K &K. the passive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, Alan right. He uses or he had a, a K and K. I don't know if he still mm -hmm. has. Mm -hmm. I think Alan is in the chat, so maybe he can mm -hmm. say. But uh, and he, I think he was like he said he liked it. He yeah, yeah. He, in, he installed it and he li really liked the sound. So I remember um, back then Larry's music. You know had um had these like pickups. It was passive. And it was the kind that you would stick on, you know, mm -hmm. like to your mm -hmm. to your ukulele. Oh, it was like a Markley mix. Really, that makes sense. But yeah. uh, I remember buying it, and it just had a picture of like a hula dancer, and it says Hawaiian ukulele four string pickup oh, or really? whatever, like and passive just, pickup. It has like a little tacky thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On yeah, it yeah and then you just kind of stick it to the <laughs> soundboard. Yeah. And I used to, I used to use that. I remember playing at Kukui Grove and like in jamming. I think it was um. I was I was jamming wipeout mm -hmm. and like the thing fell like fell out. Oh, and I'm like, just like oh, unstuck itself. Let's go to the drum solo. <laughs> I got a drum solo <laughs> and then I went and uh, I was like, Ma, you have tape and for some reason she had tape in her in her bag. And I just put it on and I just <laughs> the crap tape, out of my ukulele. And just, <laughs> Stay still. So there's like this pictures of like um of it was I was performing at Hawaii Music Club for Kauai High School. And um and there's a picture like a group picture of us going like this and it's like tape there's all over tape like my <laughs> like, like taping that thing on so didn't want that again so maybe that's you know subconsciously it's like no 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 passive. <laughs> <laughs> so Alan just said that he does have a K and K uh um mm -hmm. pickup and he said uh, I'm happy with it output is strong and mm -hmm. well balanced I've heard installation is a very important to the end result mm -hmm. yeah so mm -hmm. uh. Yeah, so he talks. He also talks about the body sound being, you know, being noticeable. Yeah, and that's so that's what I touch, don't, yeah, touch that's what your I don't ukulele like, really. and mm. or like rub it or something. It'll kind mm. of pick up that that mm. sound. Yeah, because um, I'm you know when when I when I perform and stuff like you know we we do a lot of uh, I do a lot of you know a lot of movements and whatever. And um, if if I'm going like this to like you know to do tapping or something with with my uh, you know with my ukulele, I don't want the audience to hear my arm going from here. To hear, you see, it's like you can kind of hear. Yeah, you hear but it, the passive picks the, it up. Yeah, the passive picks it up, whereas the active does not pick that up. Yeah. So that's why I didn't really like uh, like passive all too much. So yeah. I've had bad, you know, bad experiences in the past because of my my pickup coming out. But that's the pickup spot. It's not really. Yeah, <laughs> and then it seems like the K and K mm. that Alan mm. has installed is like under saddle mm -hmm. too. Is installed. Mm -hmm. in, in, yeah. So you wouldn't have that problem anyway. Right. But and then and then some people like that those mm -hmm. body mm -hmm. noises too because yeah. they do um whatever yeah. gulp is or whatever. Yeah, yeah. other mm -hmm. other kind of percussive mm -hmm. techniques and they want that to pick right. up. So right. that's that's kind of like so. the what you, you have to keep in mind when you're mm -hmm. choosing a pickup mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. I like I, I watched this video with uh guys talking about electric guitar pickups, mm -hmm. like passive versus uh um what is it? <laughs> Passive versus active. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I forgot the word active for a second there. <laughs> but uh, they said that um, that like the active kind of just like rounds out the tone, like where mm -hmm. it makes everything pretty even, right? And mm -hmm. that's where it's like nice. You don't have to worry about like something being hotter than the rest or 
like or the lows being hotter or the highs mm-hmm. being hotter it just like makes it everything even mm-hmm. but at the same time like the passive pickups at least for electric guitars have like certain tones where you can kind of find a good passive that you like yeah. that like a- amplifies whatever range that you want right mm-hmm. so you can add more character that way yeah, yeah. And so it just really depends on what you're looking for there's really no like like oh this is like active is better than passive or passive is better than active and stuff it really just depends on what you're into same thing with the uh, with the brands and stuff like some people like sure mics some people like sennheiser some mm-hmm. people like akgs it's just going to be you know different for everyone and it's just whatever floats your boat kind of thing i know it's not as convenient as microphones where you're just like oh, let me let me try this one real quick you know let me sing into this where like you have to install it first yeah you know because um it might sound good on another ukulele but then once they install it in your ukulele it might sound different so it's not you know it's not ideal when like when trying out pickups and stuff so you kind of just have to like do as much research on one and then like really commit to that one that you buy yeah. <laughs> or or try and get like or try out um ukuleles with pickups installed mm-hmm. that are similar to what you already have right mm-hmm. if you plan to install one later on mm-hmm. so like that will probably give you the closest result but again yeah. it might be it's yeah. there's so many different um it's wood you know yeah like it's, it's so many different uh chances of it being different right, right? right. Yeah. So, yeah i think uh that's pretty much it for the questions um, okay cool so uh it's been two weeks since our challenge and um, our challenge <laughs> songs are due today, apparently. And I did not know that. <laughs> okay, so, all right. Before, <laughs> in my defense, <laughs> okay. In my defense, my kid turned one this weekend. And the whole week, I've just been so stressed out with, like, putting together this, like, first birthday party. Here in Hawaii, first birthdays are, like, a big thing. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, some people, like, go all out with like the big 50 foot tents with like the slip and slides and stuff i'm like ain't no way i want to put a party like that <laughs> so i had like 50 of my friends and even then i think that small scale it was so stressful 50, 50 people that's yeah still a lot of people yeah but you know yeah, anyway so i was <laughs> not 500 people not 500 like, people yeah still a lot of people i used to when, when i used to live at um in in wailua uh across the street i'd see all the time mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. all these right. inflatables and In stuff like, that's so yeah. crazy like how much money are you spending and this kid is not even gonna remember that <laughs> like, <laughs> they buy like, exactly yeah. like, it's more for you than anything uh-huh. they buy like water slides and everything for the kids right mm-hmm. and like the kid can't even go down the yeah. water slide yeah. themselves. they're doing it for the grab man it's yeah, yeah. 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 it's grab. Yeah. like there's a boss burgers episode where like um there's like a uh, like a birthday party for this kid, and the theme was like the Great Gatsby. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, not it's for obviously the kid. it's not for yeah. the kid to do it for yeah. the grab. So yeah. anyway, I came into the office, <laughs> and then I was like, "Oh, you guys got your songs." I'm like, "Oh my god, my song!" <laughs> that was at what ten o'clock, eleven o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wrote something in the two yeah, hours the two before hours. the one p.m. Uh, cutoff time. So here's what I got. You know, here's what I could come up with in the two hours. Um, I'd say it's not that shabby. <laughs> I actually didn't need to explain myself. I could have just probably went like, yeah, I wrote this last month. <laughs> wow. I wrote it before that sounds, we even knew. That sounds so thoughtful. The of the content. <laughs> All right, here we go. So the, um, the rules were, you know, for this challenge, we had to play, um, we, had, we had to have the chords D minor, E minor, G, and F. A minor. A minor, sorry, G and yeah. A minor. So, um, those are the chords that were required. Bonuses were augmented chords. Um, another bonus was uh, three, four time or six, eight time. Was there any other bonuses that we had? Lyrics, 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 are, also yeah. lyrics, always bonus. Um, I have no lyrics for mine. You know, I barely got it in there. <laughs> I barely got the actual song in there. So here we go. I was. I was trying to think of a, a Monster Hunter song. I was like, gonna write a Monster Hunter song, like with lyrics and stuff, but I couldn't come up with it. But this is a Monster Hunter song anyway. It's an instrumental that I am going to call now as Elder Recess. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go.
<laughs> so, hey, two hours, not too shabby. So, <laughs> to explain my two. Is it, is it elder recess and then in like, uh, what is it? Like parentheses, not too shabby. <laughs> not too shabby. Right. That's so, the title, title of the song. Subtitle. Right. <laughs> so, I, um, you know, I, I love me some, uh, some good tension in, you know, in the notes and stuff. So, um, given that one of the, the one of the chords were A minor, I wanted to really keep it minor. Um, I could have gotten a route where you know I could have taken C because it's in the key of C, but I went to the A minor here. And um, how do I give attention to that A minor chord? I'm gonna hit this B note here on the seventh fret. So if I hit this B note and like let you guys hear it, would that's so these two notes. That's oh, a B against A, right? Yeah, B no B and C. No oh, B and C. Yeah, B and C together. Mm -hmm. So, but when you play it, you know, um, separately, so it sounds like. Oh yeah, it's yeah. like a ascending. Kind right, of right, ascending. Line. You know, from from the A to uh, so zero to three kind of fret. Mm -hmm. But what I did was um I I let I let the B ring out and then hit the hit the C. So there's uh, like an underlying like um. B note, but you're you're ascending so that the ear wants to hear you go up, but at the same time, like it it still keeps hears attention. it keeps the tension yeah. from the B. So, so I wanted to go up and then back down to where it began. Mm -hmm. Then to the G, to the E minor. So A, um, uh, I needed an F in there, so I had an F. So F, back to the E minor, D minor, up, back to A minor. Then I wanted to do a quick, like, um, uh, I really like that tension, so I kept doing that tension over and over again. To, uh, now this time with a minor, with a minor chord, just like the first one. And then now major chord. So F. Yeah. And, and then you, minor right here F. you changed it to three four time, yeah. right? Yeah. One, two, three. So the. So I hit this E note. Then to the C. Then to that you know to that A minor. I was thinking kind of using that you know using that minor or that um that uh, harmonic in there as well when I did a. Uh, that's oh, what I was thinking of uh -huh. about doing, but I'm like. No, I need an F in there. <laughs> like, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> like, it to yeah, I changed it to this yeah. F. Because I was thinking, uh, I guess I could still say it was it was F, but I still hit that A minor, but it wouldn't be fair. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I'm gonna... <laughs> so that's my song, Elder Recess. Two hours, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you. Uh, who wants to go next? I want to go because I'm like, this is going to be the, the lamest. <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> All right. Whatever. You uh, Chong and Po. You are... Fever first. Uh, sure. Chong and Po. Fever first. Go. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I think so I won you, last time, right? You as the winner gets to decide. Gets to decide. It's the same second. thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's up to you it's now. Uh, I'll let Kai go oh, if, okay. he's, if he's ready. Okay. Uh, I gotta uh, pull up my computer. Mm -hmm. I did it again on my computer. Oh, okay. okay, nice, nice. Yeah. So I think I'll, I'll just play it. <laughs> uh -huh. He's satisfied. <laughs> yeah. I'll just uh, play it and then I'll explain it afterwards. Okay. Though I kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted to write a Monster Hunter Christmas song as well on what I wanted to yeah. do, but yeah, that's what. So, um, <laughs> so we actually got a couple entries in the mm -hmm. UU Plus forum. Yeah, and they were they were both awesome, 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 yeah. and awesome stuff. Yeah, awesome stuff. Um, so Mark, Mark did. Um, mm. like, he he actually changed the key. Oh right? yeah, oh yeah, yeah, he went G. Yeah, went so G. um, so he was trying to mm -hmm. write in the key of C mm -hmm. using the chords that we kind of specified, but then um, he, he changed like a D minor to a D. Yeah, which or a D seven, which kind of like makes it into the key of G. Basically, yeah. yeah. But it's like I, I told Mark like, or I I responded to Mark. I, I said. Uh, you change the key, 
But then you also made it in three four, so I think we can overlook it. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one passes out the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did like a. It was kind of like a duet, right? Mm. Yeah, his and, wife and, and like finger picking and stuff. Yeah, in yeah. three four, and it was very like um, video game inspired. Oh, cool. It was cool. yeah. So what what you could do like in the um, in the future is use those substitutions that Mike was talking about because mm -hmm. it's D minor. So you're still hitting all the points where like you're hitting all the chords that we wanted you to play. If you're playing G, but instead of hitting the D, you can do a D minor, like substitute a D minor. I think a minor substitute for major. Yeah. Because, yeah or if you if like you that. played the the minor mm -hmm. and then went to the seven, oh yeah, yeah. then yeah. it would have still kind of mm -hmm. been yeah mm -hmm. in the key of C. Yeah, but totally fine. Awesome. Yeah, I heard uh, the song. It was it was really good. Yeah. So I I told him like I I preferred that he used the mm -hmm. D instead of D minor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because with the D, the the song does sound like kind of like floaty and happy mm -hmm. and with a d minor it would have mm -hmm. just ended with like a very yeah kind of yeah, like a downer yeah, yeah. right and that's so. kind of how it is with songwriting too it's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. when whatever when the song is coming out mm -hmm. it's just whatever yeah, you, you don't want to stop your head it. yeah, yeah it's, stop the train <laughs> just has to go yeah but uh yeah you know so in, in the future because one of my favorite um songs in g that incorporates that is actually um the song that i sang with my wife well, tonight you belong to me it's in g but i know and that's kind of like a way to get to the C is what he's using that D minor for. Mm -hmm. so it's a nice substitution there. Instead of a D major going to the minor, going to the C. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Kai. <laughs> <laughs> so so the reason why i did that mm -hmm. was because on the last uh song challenge or the mm -hmm. the last time we had song challenge on uh thursday live uh, -huh. uh i think it was mark in the chat and he was like oh pop punk <laughs> yeah, and i was yeah, like yeah. so you were i'll do like, a pop punk yeah. song i'll, I'll do that harder towards, <laughs> towards it <laughs> and, and then like uh i i started writing it and i just knew like i'm not i can't I, I don't really write lyrics or I don't do that. Mm -hmm. So like, what am I going to do? And there's a band called Anamana Gucci where they do like a uh, chip tune and they do, they use like Game Boys and Super Nintendos nice. to play music mm -hmm. and then they play guitar with it. So I kind of thought like, oh, I'll do the same Something thing. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Because as soon as like the electric guitar came in, I'm like, oh, snap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's great. Awesome, man. Good job. Nice. Hey, tell us about the, uh, you know, the song and stuff. Um, any kind of structure stuff? Um... Oh, I had a hard time with it because I wanted to keep it like. So the first thing that I wrote. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, we lost again. Signal we lost again. Signal. <laughs> uh, we're, here, like we're here. You can hear us, right? All good. <laughs> Here's my uke, for example. Look how nice. Look here. 
Don't look at the, <laughs> don't, look at, don't, look, don't look at the other thing. Look here, oh, the Duke, so yeah. beautiful, so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Distraction. Uh, sorry. Look for over it. here. Smoke screen. Smoke screen. <laughs> <laughs> all good. All good. All good. Oh, oh. Let's see. So. Come yeah. On. Oh, oh, look at it. Look, look at these tutors. What, what about these tutors? <laughs> Aaron, you see these tutors? They're great. They're funny layer tuners. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're oh, got him. Back again. Got okay. uh, see, it's like yeah. it's like it never even happened. It's not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, magician. So. <laughs> <a> distraction. <laughs> uh, so the, the I just want a gif of that. See you doing this. <laughs> Yeah, the the first thing I I wrote for that is just that like it's a C G F, so it's like or a quick change to like right. Yeah, and so like actually my plan was to do that like twice, and that's very reminiscent of a, a Anamanaguchi song called Airbrushed. Mm -hmm. If people look that up, but then I wrote this part like. I kind of oh. combine the two of those okay. and then like I got some of my chords in there <laughs> right and then that's like where it's like ah oh, I need to add more chords <laughs> so better yeah, like write the, a bridge part yeah the bridge <laughs> part with, with the um uh with, with the what is it um what is that oh, arpeggios oh, yeah the arpeggios yeah. are super cool in that yeah it's it's actually like um so that the arpeggios mm -hmm. I, I didn't initially have it in there and I I just did that like last <laughs> night I'm glad you added it in there. That's the, yeah. that's the yeah, part yeah, yeah. that kind of popped. Like, oh my god, it's coming and, at me in my and, face. <laughs> and when I when I wrote it last night, I did it on a synth, and so it's like an arpeggio on a synth, and it goes, it ascends up, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's it's just that chord, the F chord, and it mm -hmm. ascends up. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, like, I found a guy who makes a plugin mm -hmm. that's all Game Boy sounds. Oh, cool! <laughs> so I had to bring that in. <laughs> like, it was like late at night, and I found this, and I was like. Dang it! Yeah, I gotta oh. use this too. So you should have been like so. me and just enrolled it like a week ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah <I> should. <laughs> but uh, if you listen to it and like with headphones too, like this is a detail that I'm sure like <laughs> nobody cares about, right? Uh, the synth is playing in one side, like your left, mm -hmm. and then the Game Boy sounds are playing your right. Cool. And then as they ascend, they cross over, so uh -huh. they end on the opposite oh, side. Oh, cool! Some like padding stuff. Yeah, nice. Like, and that's just like something that I was like, "Oh, this is." Thought that it would be. This yeah, is yeah, cool, yeah, yeah. but nobody's gonna notice this. <laughs> it's like it's like the two characters in the video game. It's like you know, like doing going this. Like, yeah, yeah. Going you. it's awesome. <laughs> hey, one more round of applause. Man. All right, Aaron. Okay, so so I, the I, best I, for last. No, no. <laughs> so so yeah. I don't, I wrote like a Christmas song, uh, so I like I kind of had the idea of writing a Christmas song um, for this, but yeah, this is kind of what came out. It's like a sad Christmas song. Oh, um, okay. So, <laughs> so yeah, wearing his heart on his sleeve, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let's see if I got. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to look at the lyrics. I want <laughs> to be, like, you know? be like you know.
kind of talking about that where like mm. you know whatever comes out is what comes out mm. so uh, like I, I didn't really know how to write the song because I, I hardly write in the key of C because it's either too low for me mm. or too high so mm. even that like yeah that, with the chorus the then. chorus was like a Ooh. stretch for my <laughs> voice but like I knew that it had to go there you know because <laughs> yeah, the yeah. because because the verse was so low mm. the chorus kind of had That's to go it. high mm. Mm. But like, yeah, so it's it's written for a better singer than me. <laughs> <laughs> that was great, though. But yeah, that was awesome. That yeah, was awesome. So, um, so tell us about some of the you know, structural yeah, so, stuff. So I was thinking about, um, because I was thinking Christmas, I was thinking kind of like that. In my head, I had like those tubular bells. Mm -hmm. And so um, the tubular bells are usually tuned to the scale, mm -hmm. right? So like, I just thought like the, that descending. That's like... Mm -hmm. Right, like, oh, you know, it's like yeah, obvious. Yeah, joy to the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like so. I just did that where um, I held the C chord, but then I did that descending. Mm -hmm. You know, that, those are those notes, mm -hmm. and then and then I kind of wanted to incorporate the three four times, so mm -hmm. that's why it, it mm -hmm. sounds, you know, with that that mm -hmm. it's like a six eight, but yeah. So um, so that's what I was thinking with that. So I kind of mm -hmm. ended up starting with that. Mm -hmm. That was like mm -hmm. um, where I started my thought process. Mm -hmm. And then um, a while back, Kahai showed me a video on YouTube. Is is like that Vox video about um, what like a, the secret chord that makes oh, songs to Christmas. Christmassy. <laughs> yeah. And so like, yeah, so if you look up that video, they kind of deconstruct like mm -hmm. um, some classic oh, Christmas songs. And and there's a there's a chord in there mm -hmm. that they, they describe as like melty. Or it's like a, it's, they, they kind of, in the video, they, they say it's like, oh, it's this specific chord. Yeah. yeah. But what they really mean is like, it's that chord voicing kind of, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and as, as part of a progression. So I pretty much just stole that. Because I wanted to write yeah. a Christmas song yeah. and like, you know, yeah. that's like this kind a of proven a proven formula. Yeah. 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 And, and that's kind of what, it, what mm -hmm. when you're thinking about writing songs to, mm -hmm. um, you don't have to think too hard if you're mm. not trying to write a masterpiece, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, so I went with that. So it goes C, you know, that descending C to um, like a D minor, mm. um, D minor seven, mm. and then it goes to that D, D um, minor seven flat five, mm. and that, that's the, the chord. Secret you, chord. The secret flat chord five, that they say. Five. Yeah, so it, so you could kind of do like C, and then during the chorus too, I go to an F instead of the D minor seven. So I go, and then to the E minor, to the D minor, or no, to the F, and then still using that same chord, D minor seven flat five. That's like 
that feels yeah. like Christmas Ooh, already. It's melting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so from kind of from that basis, um, I came up with a chorus first. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was thinking like at the time I was thinking like, oh, maybe I could think back to like, you know, uh, like a previous girlfriend and like the mm-hmm. first Christmas mm-hmm. that, you know, yeah. that we were not together mm-hmm. anymore. How, exactly how many girlfriends? This year. Two years. How many have you had this year? We, we don't have the time, Aldrin. It's too, yeah. too much. Yeah, but There's not uh, enough numbers in this world. <laughs> no. So, so I, was, I was thinking about that, but then like that emotion mm-hmm. wasn't strong enough for yeah. me. You know, like I was, I was thinking about trying to trying to remember what i felt like then mm-hmm. and the emotion wasn't like coming in clear for me so i couldn't like i didn't feel like i could really write about it yeah and so yeah, yeah yeah and so um so i i started thinking about my grandma who passed away this oh. year and so it so now feels. now yeah now mm. th- and then after that i all of the verses came out easily mm. you know and mm. that's kind of when you when you talk about songwriting, you you gotta mm. go to an uncomfortable place, yeah. and then like figure out what you know. And if mm. it comes out easily, that means that you know you're in the right yeah. place, you know. Yeah, so that's emotions. that's kind of what it, what it happened. And and Kahai and I, well, mm. Kahai's grandma also passed away mm-hmm. this this past year too. And so like we were kind of talking about like grandma memories and stuff mm. like that. And so there are lyrics in there that really like you know, kind of harken back to like our memories of our grandmas. And so that that that's why there's one about like um searching underneath the tree for the envelope, envelope. you know, mm-hmm. because that just reminds you of yeah, you know, your like yeah, some money yeah, or yeah. Christmas then, money or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's mm. that's um I don't know, yeah. It, <gasps> I never realized I, that my envelopes would disappear if my grandma went. <laughs> yeah, it's Aww. like it's, it's not it's <laughs> never yeah. gonna happen again. From, yeah, you know. Santa must know, right? Santa must know. Like, oh this person doesn't have a <laughs> yeah. grandma, no envelope <laughs> for them. <laughs> I need to pick up Kingdom yeah. Hearts. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that was, it was not even that gravel, buddy. Uh, so, so yeah. So that's that was kind of like my process of of writing this nice. one. So I, like it, it started came, off like for like for a girl. And yeah, I was thinking into... thinking it as like a romantic mm-hmm. song, but then I don't know. It just it's, it just flowed easier. Yeah, it's when you, way better when you tap yeah. into like mm-hmm. a feeling that's just in you. Mm-hmm. You know, or you're more connected with, right? Yeah, I yeah. think like yeah, it's always funny when you like look at songs and their meanings, right? And there's so many songs where people are like, oh, of course, it's about, like, romantic yeah. feelings or whatever. <laughs> and then, like, the one that I know is, like, human nature, right? Mm-hmm. And there's that line is, like, why, why, just tell them that it's human nature. Mm-hmm. And the guy who wrote it, he said that his daughter got hurt at school. And she mm-hmm. came up to him and she was like, dad, why did the kid hit me, you know? Oh. And he's like, oh, it's human nature. Like, kids uh, are just going to be... Yeah, so it's not necessarily like somebody like you know breaking your heart, and you're just like, oh, it's yeah, human yeah, nature. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of the way that yeah people my, take my, it. My favorite example of that is closing time. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. His daughter like being yeah. born or something. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's about his daughter being born. There's like a video of it where he explains it, and mm. everybody thinks it's like about a bar, right? <laughs> oh, like yeah. Closing time bar at a bar, bar. Mm-hmm. but like if you if you actually like look at the lyrics, it's like oh. That totally makes sense now. <laughs> well, we were we were talking about like that other song, right? About the um kind of poetry, right? <laughs> and oh, then yeah. it's like yeah, so oh, yeah, probably so, is. Yeah, recent mm-hmm. recently oh there's a who, who is it? Um Ho'onua did that Ho'onua. Song, yeah. yeah, so there's like a local song here in Hawaii that came out when we were like in high school. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a song called Plant Me a Poetry or Poetry. Poetry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so um I I always just thought it was about a poetry, and <laughs> to the face value. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then and then recently I heard it in like I was in Foodland and they had it playing on the speakers in in the grocery store, and um and then I realized that it's about brother is like they wrote it about brother mm-hmm. is because he has like a quote, um it, it's if you watch the um the music video for White Sandy Beach. Mm-hmm. He talks about like, oh, when I when I die, don't cry for me. Just plant a big koa tree, mm-hmm. and then remember me. And so yeah. and so that's what they were talking about in the yeah. song. Yeah, I'm gonna steal and, that quote. 
<laughs> just buy we'll a copy of I'll Monster draft. Hunter no. and uh, just enjoy. <laughs> El Jean Guerrero original quote. El Jean Guerrero original <laughs> quote. <laughs> but yeah, that, I mean, that's that's kind of what's what's cool about songs too, is because like everybody listening to it kind of like mm-hmm. takes their own meaning for yeah. it anyway. Yeah. So it doesn't. It actually doesn't even really matter why you wrote it. Mm-hmm. It just like becomes like a yeah. thing that everybody can relate to. So. Mm-hmm. I it's think it's beautiful, it, man. I think it's pretty cool that like both times that we've had this challenge, like you and Daniel have wrote in, writ uh, like lyrics, yeah. yeah. And you both like it's Daniel wrote like a kind of like a, a funny song, yeah. right, about like Christmas. Christmas song, yeah. But then you also wrote a Christmas song, <laughs> yeah. so it's like the opposite of funny. There, yeah. there, there's nothing funny about that. Sad. It's sad. super sad. But you guys are in tune, at least like somewhat, right, or something yeah, like yeah, is something, like something about yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we had a like the next time like you guys both write songs, we'll see if it lines up again. <laughs> yeah. Test the hypothesis, right? <laughs> Master songwriters, like, have you checked out any of other um, of his other songs? Uh, yeah, Daniel, yeah. he actually writes some pretty like nerdy, dorky kind of songs. Funny, funny, funny cool. fun stuff. Yeah, because yeah. I follow him on Twitter, and like um, sometimes he posts it on Twitter, like, oh, oh. I wrote this like new song or uh-huh. something. Check that out. Like, oh, I gotta just, follow him on Twitter. Yeah, the, the, the download. Like, just give him one view. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. So okay. good job. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So good job, everyone. Hey, class all around. Everyone did great, including myself. <laughs> so hard at it. <laughs> Work really. Work the <laughs> hardest out of everybody. So um, let's set up a new challenge. So oh, uh, by the way, you uh, you two will be um. You know, we'll, 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 we'll do a drawing, <laughs> you know, for, uh, we'll do a drawing next week for, for a prize. I'll bring a prize in next week. So, um, we have two, right? Two, yep. um, okay. So for those so far. two, I'll, I'll bring a prize in, you know, random, like going to be a random prize. I don't know what it is yet. I'll bring something in next week and we'll, uh, we'll do a, you know, we'll do a, a draw for who, who gets that random prize. It'll, it'll be awesome. Random prize is going to be awesome. I'm going to make a Christmas theme. I'm going to have a Christmas theme. Prize. Prize <laughs> next week Thursday. So look forward to that. Um, yeah. So let's let's set up a new challenge. So um, what key? Uh, I don't know. Uh, or like I actually, the chat. <laughs> or, yeah, I was in the chat. Uh, actually, me and Aaron were talking about like maybe we can do a challenge where it's a specific. You have to use a specific chord progression, but it can be in any key, right? Like and oh, then and you yeah, can yeah. use that just so like instead of a key, we'll choose uh just a progression. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then and it you has have to be in that order. Yeah, and it has to or like and it'll just be like that whatever that little bit, and then the rest of the song yeah, can, yeah, do you can do other things, yeah. but yeah. around it, yeah, but it has have to have that. include that At least part. Once. Mm. Okay, let's go with the two five one. Very you know, two five two, one, two five one. Let's have a two five one. You need to have a two five one in your song somewhere. So, like, an uh, example of a 251 would be like E minor, E7, A. Just think Sunday morning. So. Like that. Like that kind of. I'm here, I'm heading home, and now I'm home. Okay. You know, that kind of. So, 251, whatever key uh, you want to do, and you can, can have anything else after the 251, but you have to have a 251 somewhere in the song, right? Yeah, That's what you yeah, want to do? yeah. Okay, have a two five one somewhere in the song. Any bonuses, lyrics, as usual. Yeah, and that takes lyrics. twice the time as I found out <laughs> to, <laughs> to do it in songs. Um, okay, lyrics. What else? We did diminish and augmented chords. Do we want like another hmm. chord addition? Oh, did anybody yeah. add that? The or augmented chord. Augmented. augmented. Uh, I, don't I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah, I don't. I know. Did. I, know I, I did. Yeah, you had the flat five instead. I did not. Yeah, I, I, I don't I think. Our... I have no time to be creative. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nobody did augmented, so we could yeah. throw that in. Okay, let's uh, let's keep the augmented. Let's do an augmented. Um, and let's see. Ooh, what's a real? Let's give a real challenge, guy. <laughs> For a bonus. A bonus five four times. Five, four, I was gonna five. say that. <laughs> How about no, nobody's gonna do it? <laughs> um, I did it in three four, and then one is half time. One measure is half time. So okay. technically. How about this? How about four four, but there's one measure of two four. If you want a oh, like a bonus. Yeah, just, yeah a bonus of like, like hey one, uh, yeah, hey, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. Two, three, four, one, two. Hey, yeah. 
two, yeah. three, four. You know. Okay. So one measure of two, four somewhere. Augment it four, four with one measure of two, four. Somewhere in the song, it doesn't matter. And you can only you know you if you want to just do it one time, totally fine. Um, another example is Purple Rain. Purple Rain has a you know has a two four uh, two four measure in there, and then it goes to kind of like a pickup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. And then the second thing. verse has a, has a two four in there. Oh, okay. So that's a nice little challenge. So two five one, whatever key that you want. It's an open challenge this week, and um, yeah, that sounds that sounds great. Mm-hmm. Well, every time we do like bonuses, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I I just like okay, nope. <laughs> just just get the the main part done. Get that part. Like I, we should have um at the end of the year, like uh, put up like the like the the top ten or whatever, and everybody can like vote on which one is like the best one. They get the belt for that year, <laughs> like, uh, the, the championship belts, <laughs> songwriting champion. I was gonna say too. I, I think um if people want to do the past challenges too, oh, like yeah. yeah, do that and submit it. You know, and it like. Well, we'll just leave it open in the forum, so it's not like you can't do that ever, yeah. right? Like, and we want to see it. Like, I think uh, I don't know if this is a joke, but Yoda said, um, "Add or well, I have parts of a song. It did not have a full, complete beginning, middle, and end." So, but like, yeah, if if maybe it's like the two weeks, it's like oh, I just couldn't finish it in time, yeah. or yeah. like uh, I I know I was talking to Alan, and Alan is like busy getting ready for christmas gigs mm-hmm. so you couldn't do the song challenge either uh so if you guys like just want to try yeah. Yeah. Later. Yeah. yeah yeah we'd love to see it too yeah okay so uh there's another question if there's gonna be a live lesson on the 27th um i'll be here are you gonna be here yeah yeah okay sure. as long as we're all here i think we can uh, we can do yeah. one 27th thursday so mm. christmas is on tuesday yeah two uh, days after christmas yeah yeah, the Eve is a twenty fourth. Yeah, yeah. So like the only thing that we have canceled, right? Like from our schedule, mm-hmm. is that there's um private lessons. Private there would have been private lessons on twenty fourth. Yeah, and the thirty first. So those, but there's still private lessons on the twenty eighth and the fourth. Yeah. So just mm-hmm. Christmas Eve yeah, and Christmas then Eve and, um, New, New Year's, Year's Eve. Eve. Yeah. So. Yep. So that's all. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Live Lesson Thursdays. If you are listening to us via podcast, thank you so much. Uh, if you guys want to download this via podcast, check out your, uh, you know, your your favorite podcast provider. May it be iTunes, Podcasts, uh, the app, the podcast app, and uh, there's also Stitcher. There's Podcast One. All kinds of uh, all kinds of stuff that you guys can use to download this awesome podcast. Uh, also, thank you folks so much for signing up for UU Plus and watching the live lesson live, watching us, watching me like lean on Aaron Nakamura in the first Watch. part of this uh, first part our, of this show. Watching our cameras cut out. Yeah, our cameras cut off. You know, thank you so much for that. It's some premium content that we're paying for. <laughs> yeah. so that's some real. Thank you. So just much. premium <laughs> content. Just the top. Thank you. Just, Thank you for watching this duct tape boat. <laughs> yeah, top shelf stuff. Really, top shelf content from, from Ukulele on. Now, thank you guys so much. It's, it's been fun. We always have fun here on uh, Live Lesson Thursdays. We always have fun on uh, you know on our, all our live streams. Be, be, you know, songs made easy or the jams and stuff. We always have fun. So thank you so much for tuning in. Stick around for songs made easy. We are doing Mele Kaliki Maka today. So have fun. I'll see you folks next time. Have a great one. Aloha.